Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about macromolecules. So first of all, when you hear the word macro, you're thinking big, which is going to be the opposite of something that's smaller, which would be a micromolecule. So what exactly are they? So obviously, like I said, they're very large and they are in four categories, carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, or otherwise known as fats, and nucleotides, which are your DNA and your RNA. So macromolecules, you know, since we said that they are a bunch of molecules grouped together, we are going to use the term polymers to describe them. So I have a picture here of a train car or a train which is made up of a whole bunch of cars and that's kind of like how they are so macromolecules are going to be made up of smaller molecules that we call monomers all right when you think of like mono something it has to be uh, it has to do with one and it's the the term poly means many so polymer too many to count so i kind of uh, drew an arrow here representing each of these cars, and I drew three, but you, you get the point. Um, each of these um, train cars will, be, uh, will represent a monomer, and together, whether you have two monomers, whether you have three or more, then we're going to use the term polymer for that. So the first part of these macromolecules, by the way, they're not in any particular order, but um, I'm going to be talking about carbohydrates. They are important. Um, you know, I, I always feel like carbohydrate gets a bad rap in the press, um, but they are so essential. And as we're moving along in our AMP course, we're going to see how important they are, right? And they provide most of our energy. If you really want something that is going to give you energy, carbohydrate will be um, the one to go to. They provide our energy, which comes in the form of ATP. And they come in the form of sugars, starches, glycogen, cellulose, which we get from plants. Um, and anytime you hear the word saccharides, all right, saccharides, they were all, they're always going to end in saccharides, like monosaccharides, um, which would be like glucose, meaning they are the simplest form. You cannot break them down any um, further. Or polysaccharides that you would see, you know, we would consider bread to be a polysaccharide. And another hint or clue is that sugars, you know, sugars are going to end in O's. All right. So if we're going to be talking about fructose and lactose, all the O's are a type of sugars. So the monosaccharides, they're going to be the simplest sugars, even part of our nucleic acid. Yes, the DNA and RNA are made up of these sugars. So I'm sure you can now see how important they are. All right, so deoxyribose, which is, you know, DNA, the full meaning of DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid and RNA is ribonucleic acid. So, but they are, we're going to see this um, deoxyribose um, being a backbone for DNA and ribose being the backbone for RNA. And there are also common monosaccharides like glucose, fructose, galactose um, that we're going to be talking about. Basically, these are the simplest form. After um, when they're at this monosaccharide level, they cannot be broken down any further. So this is usually the type of sugars that our cells are going to use. Then moving on, moving on to disaccharides. So disaccharides, you hear the word di, which will be for two. So this is going to be two um, monosaccharides, right? A monosaccharide plus another monosaccharide, you have two. And this is usually done by removing water molecules. So we're saying that if you want to make a polymer, you're going to use remove water molecule in the form of dehydration synthesis reaction. So what are examples of disaccharides? That's going to be sucrose. Sucrose is your typical table sugar, right? You put in your coffee, your tea, your drinks. Um, and when you break it down, you get fructose and glucose, like I mentioned in the previous slide. And lactose, yes, lactose that we get from milk. We get lactose from milk. And when lactose is broken down, it is get broken down 
obviously through an enzyme called lactase, it gets broken down into glucose and galactose. So for example, people who are lactose intolerant, they do not make that lactase, all right? So on, um, as a result, they are unable to bro break down lactose into glucose and galactose. And eventually it's gonna get digested, but it's gonna take time. And during that time, you know, there's discomfort, diarrhea, upset stomach, and so on. So the next one is going to be polysaccharides. Like I said earlier, the term poly means many. So many sugars, right? So there's so many hundreds of monosaccharides combining or coming together to form the largest carbohydrates. The main polysaccharide we have in the human body is glycogen. So let's say you had apple for breakfast your body is going to take you some of those glucose and then store some in the form of glycogen in your liver because your body is like well i'm not really sure the next time he or she is going to eat so but in when you start getting hungry and your blood sugar your blood glucose dips down a little bit some of that glycogen will then be converted back to glucose so that your body can use them so uh, other examples of polysaccharides would be starch so starch is a way that plants store their own form of uh, glucose they're gonna they're not gonna use you're not gonna find glycogen in in plants you're going to find starch instead instead which is obviously what we humans eat and cellulose is also something else that we see in plants. We tend to see it in the plant walls. We humans cannot digest cellulose, so some of them might say, so why are we eating them? Well, another term for cellulose would be fiber. They help to add bulk to your waist so that it's easier for you, and it's easier for you to excrete them, and also the frequency of you getting rid of your waste would be quicker and faster. So that concludes the first part of macromolecules, and thank you. All right, bye-bye.